Hey everyone! Alright, so today I wanted to talk about things that we regret doing during our build for our schoolie. And this is, it's not necessarily really even regrets so much as it's things we wish we had done differently while we were in the building process and that we are really kind of feeling the effects of not having done it well enough or properly or you know the option that we chose ended up not really working out as well as we thought it was going to and now we're really feeling the sort of pains of having to deal with those situations over and over and over again during daily life while we live on our school bus so that's what we're going to be talking about today so you know let's go ahead and get started number one this is probably the the worst that we have to deal with is that we really wish we would have insulated the bus properly and done a way better job at it than what we did and it is it's a hot mess you know we use the thick polystyrene insulating sheets you know that you can buy at home depot or lowe's or anything like that and we cut them up and we've got sections going through all of the ribs well there are gaps in between where they fit in because it's a rigid piece of you know foamy plastic styrofoam stuff so they don't really line up properly we didn't use anything to fill the gaps because we we're like oh it's totally fine it's like not a big deal but it is actually a really big deal and so as a result the bus is really hot in the summer and it's really cold in the winter it's totally fine you know when the weather is nice and we've got the windows open and it's great but you know the summer and the winter are ending up you know to be really quite problematic what we should have done is either filled in all of the gaps that we have left over from where the polystyrene sheets fit together with like that great stuff spray in insulation or we should have just sprung for the actual spray in insulation which is expensive but fabulous it covers everything you can either get it done or you might be able to rent the machine that actually sprays it out but really that's what we should have done that would have been the best choice second best would have been filling in all of our gaps and taking the time to make sure that we had done a good job with the insulating because now you know if we want to go back and fix it we have to pull everything out we've got to pull the ceiling down we've got to pull all the walls out it's basically you know a total rebuild or gut at this point in order to redo all of our insulation and we didn't insulate the floor either so that's something we definitely wish we would have done number two and this is going along with the whole insulating problem that we have we didn't do anything to the front where the driver's area is we didn't do any insulation in terms of heat or cold and we didn't do any insulation for sound so as a result the front of the bus when we're driving is super super hot because there is a lot of heat that comes off of that engine and it is very very loud while we're driving so if Mike and I want to have a conversation with each other while we're on the road, we are yelling at each other, like legitimately top of our lungs yelling at each other, you know, or we sit in silence and we talk when we stop. That's pretty much where we're at. If it's in the summer, it is so hot. Like when we drove from Florida to Texas in August of last year, it was unbearably hot. Like we had a cooler full of ice water and I kept taking bandanas and like wrapping them around my neck and stuff because it was just so hot and there's not enough air for like moving stuff around because you know we've got the driver's window the driver's side window but on the passenger side the first window that we have is the you know the first start of the window which is really back behind the door and so it doesn't do a whole lot of good in terms of you know getting the air moving and circulating and cooling you down while you're driving so the front is uncomfortable so yeah we should have done better insulation there we should have insulation all over really so Number three, we really wish we had put in outlets on the outside of the bus for cable and for the internet. We didn't do either of them, didn't think it was going to be a big deal. It's not like we've ever paid for cable before, but a lot of campgrounds have cable. You know, if you, if you have the cable, you can like plug in and actually get some TV. And since our internet connection is so spotty, it's kind of nice to be able to, you know, watch whatever AMC is showing on whatever night, you know, or whatever. So we wish we had done that because right now our setup is super janky we basically have three really long coax cables every coax cables we have three really long cable cables 
and one runs from the little box on the outside from the campground underneath the bus and then it pops up on the other side and it feeds into two separate windows where we have our TVs. We just put in our second TV. We couldn't figure out where to put it before but we did actually finally find a place for it so that's exciting. We can now watch TV in the bedroom. So one feeds in right through here for this TV and then a few windows back it feeds in through that window. So we have to leave the windows cracked in order to have the cables running which isn't a big deal. We haven't had an issue with it while it's raining in terms of water getting in or anything like that but you know it does look a little janky because we've got stuff just like hanging out of our windows and because we have to split the feed it does degrade a little bit so neither image is really as good as it could be but you know so we do wish we had put in outlets on the outside of the bus for for that and you do see it a lot with RVs clearly they've got you know their shit together but we don't so that's cool and for the internet it would be nice if we could do like a hard plug in like a hard wire into the into the internet right now we've got a antenna that we stick up through our emergency hatch in the front so that hangs out but it's an indoor antenna so if it starts raining then we have to pull it back in because it can't really get wet so we've got that because the bus itself does block a little bit of a wi-fi signal it's really hard to get a good signal inside the bus we can get one outside if we're sitting on like a patio table but we can't really get one inside and you know if the weather is inclement or it's super super hot and really sunny we don't have any shade then you know you want to be inside and not like baking in the sun so we do wish we had put in outlets on the outside of the bus number four we wish we had put the electrical panel in the middle of the bus as opposed to in the back so optimally if we were doing it all over again we'd put it somewhere over here like underneath the counter for this uh, for the kitchen instead of in the very very back in our little garage area and this is one we'd have a much shorter cable run for our power cable when we're in campgrounds which would be great because then we can buy cheaper cables as of right now we have to buy like really long cables and it'd be nice to save a few bucks on expensive cables and then the biggest reason is that anytime we want to do work on the electrical box or we need to swap something out or anything like that we have to pull pretty much everything out of the garage in order to get back in there and access it which is a huge pain in the butt so there are no quick electrical changes like if we need to you know if we blow a, blow a breaker we've got to pull everything out to actually be able to get back to our box part of this is poor organization on our part for our garage and then the other one is just where it's located it's just tough to get to so that's a pain if we could do it all over again we would totally change where it's located but you know number five is we wish we had done a different paint type on the exterior of the bus we used an interior exterior latex base paint from Valspar which was recommended to us by one of the paint people at Lowe's and we totally should not have followed that recommendation like it went on really smooth and it's a nice color and it's got a little bit of a sheen so it looks fine but it's really not designed for what we are using it for and it stains really easily so those bugs that you know inevitably get on the front of your car or on like that huge front piece because we have a really big windshield their little gross dead you know bug bodies will stain our paint it doesn't like chip off it peels off because it's a latex base and so it's it's kind of sticky and so if something happens and we lose a hunk of paint it'll peel a big section of it off so you know it's not optimal for heavy duty automotive use it's just not we should have used something like a glossy rust-oleum and just taken the time to do all of the sanding and the painting which we didn't want to do which is why we used a different paint to begin with or we should have pointed up the cash and had gone and gotten it painted at you know some place that will actually paint a bus with proper automotive paint with the clear coating and the shellac and all of that kind of stuff it'd be more durable it would look a lot better you know i mean it's not it's obviously not a make or break thing it's not like the bus functions with you know doesn't function without the kind of paint that we would optimally like but it would be easier to wash it would be easier to keep looking nice you know all of that kind of stuff so definitely wish we had used a different paint and then number six this is sort of the last thing that we're really sort of feeling the effect of is we wished we had just 
gone straight in and gone for a full-sized fridge instead of a mini fridge. We've got one, it's like 31 inches tall. It fits just underneath the counter, which is why we got it. It's no longer under our counter. We've moved it since we purchased it, but we do wish we had gotten a full size. And I don't necessarily mean like big double doors with a giant ice chest or anything like that, but you know, a full size tall regular fridge. The power draw is really about the same. Like they use the same amount of electricity per year. We didn't look up specs when we purchased the fridge. We were actually just going by size. And the small fridge means that we can't store a whole lot and we can't do food prep. So like I can't make a batch of something to eat for the rest of the week. We can't store leftovers. We just don't have the space for it. We're really limited on just the amount of stuff that we can put in there. And this particular fridge freezes really easily in the fridge component. So if we've got it set cold enough to where the stuff in the door actually stays cold, the stuff in the back of the fridge will freeze. And so we've had eggs freeze and then explode. We've had other stuff freeze and then unfreeze and then freeze and then unfreeze and freeze and then unfreeze, which is not good for food, you know, for that to happen. And so we kind of end up having to keep everything in the front of our already very small fridge and it's just not really working for us. So we will eventually end up swapping the fridge out and getting a full size fridge because it's a pain to not be able to prep stuff or to store, you know, a lot of frozen veggies or whatever, you know, it's just, it makes it difficult to, to be able to cook on the bus, you know, because we're at the point really where if we make dinner and we have leftovers, we can't store them. We don't have a place to put leftovers. Every once in a while, we can put them in baggies and manage to shove them in somewhere in the fridge. But for the most part, we just can't fit it. And, you know, it's wasteful or we end up stuffing ourselves at night so that we don't, you know, waste all of our leftover food. And it's just not, it's not optimal. So anyway, wish we had a full size fridge. That's an easy one to fix though. Unlike everything else, that one is actually an easy one to fix. So we don't have to pull anything out other than that fridge, which is cool. So anyway, yeah, those are like the top six things that we wish we had done differently during our schoolie build. Things that would really make living in the bus full time a lot smoother and a lot easier. And yeah, so, you know, I hope it was interesting. I hope y'all, you know, learn something, don't repeat our mistakes, all of that kind of stuff. And I will see y'all in the next one. Bye. And I forgot to say, give us a thumbs up if you liked this video and subscribe if you want to see more stuff from us. We do schooly Q&A videos, so if you've got any questions about things from our build or what it's like being on a bus or anything like that, you know, leave them down below. We would love to answer them. You know, we do vlog videos from when we go and travel or daily life around our school bus and all of that kind of stuff. So yeah, like, subscribe. That's pretty much it. Now I'm really gone. Bye.